Have you ever created an automation that just wouldn't work? Or maybe you have an automation that was working and suddenly stopped, or an automation that just isn't quite right. Well, today, we're going to take a look at some of the common tools and methods for troubleshooting your Home Assistant automations. So hang around. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now, if you've ever had to try to troubleshoot an automation, you may know that sometimes it's harder to find the problem than it is to implement the fix. Now, I've troubleshooted dozens of my own automations over the years, and I've helped a few of you out there with your own automations. So today, we're going to take a look at some of the tools that are available and the common techniques I use when trying to troubleshoot an automation. Now, we might have to take a look at just a little bit of YAML, but note that the things that I show can be used whether you write your automations in YAML or whether you use the Home Assistant UI Automation editor to create your automations. Now before we get started there is one thing that you'll need to double check. Down here along your sidebar go down and click on your profile picture, scroll down and be sure that advanced mode is toggled on. This will give us access to some of the tools we're going to need to troubleshoot. Now don't worry, turning on advanced mode doesn't mean that you suddenly have to start doing all of your automations in YAML, it just gives us access to some tools that wouldn't be available if advanced mode is not enabled. So with that enabled, let's take a look at an actual automation. So for our troubleshooting, I'm going to use one of the automations I'm probably asked about most often, and that's the one for the LED stair lighting system. Now this actually consists of five different automations, but we're just going to take a look at one. And that's the one that says, when motion is detected by this bottom binary sensor, turn the stair lights on. That's the way that it's supposed to work. Well, what happens when it doesn't work? When the lights do, don't come on, when you step in front of this binary sensor. That's what we're going to start with, and let's see if we can troubleshoot what the problem is here. So the first thing I always do when trying to troubleshoot an automation is first check the physical devices and entities to make sure that they're working correctly. So to test our devices and our entities, we want to go over here to Developer Tools, and we're going to come up here to States, and we, of course we could browse through this list since it shows everything, but since I happen to know the name, the Stair Motion Bottom 2, Okay, so now that I have that up, so to test the binary sensor, it's very easy. I just need to watch the state and move in front of the sensor. If I see the sensor going from on when I'm in front of it and off when I'm no longer in front of it, that lets me know that this motion detector is working properly. The next thing we want to do is we want to check that light. This entity is called light.stairlights. Once we have that, we want to click this little info and see we've got a toggle here. So the one thing we want to do is if we flip that on, do the stair lights come on? And when we flip it back off, do the stair lights go off? That lets us know whether the entity or the device is working correctly or not. Now, if any of your devices aren't working as expected or properly, you might as well just stop right there because the automation is never going to work. So you need to go back and check those devices, make sure you've got them wired correctly, make sure they're configured directly. If you've defined them in ESP Home, go check there. But you need to have your devices working as expected and properly before going any further with the automation. But let's assume that the devices are now working and they're working properly. Where do we go next? Well, the next thing I like to try and do is to figure out which part of the automation might be causing trouble. As you're aware, an automation consists of up to three parts. There's the trigger, that's what causes the automation to fire some kind of event or change in state of another device, in this case, our binary sensor. Then there are optional conditions that have to be met before the automation will run. We'll come back to conditions in a little bit. Then there are the actual actions themselves. Those are the steps that the automation is going to run. Now it's very easy to test the action portion of our automation, so let's start there. First thing we need to do is come down here to our settings, go to our automations and scenes, and search for and find the automation. In my case, it's called bottom motion lights on. Now, one thing I should mention here, if you are someone who creates all of your automations in YAML, some of these tools won't be available unless each of your automations has a unique ID. Now, a unique ID is simply just a random number or some combination of letters and numbers that is unique across all of your automations. I use something called UUID Generator. I'll leave a link to that down in the video description. But if your automations don't have a unique ID, some of these tools may not be available. Okay, so with our automation, we need to come over here to our three dots. And the first thing we want to do is click the information. We want to verify that the automation is enabled. 
it is possible to disable your automations. And so if the automation is dis disabled, it obviously is not going to fire. With that enabled, next we want to come over here and we want to select Run. Run is going to skip the trigger and skip the conditions and actually just run the actions of our automation. So we'll click that and see if our lights come on as expected. If they do, great. That means the problem isn't in our actions. It's in either our trigger or our conditions. But what happens if we click Run and the lights don't come on or the actions don't take place? Well, that means we have a problem with our actions and we need to start looking at our automation there. Now, one of the first things I like to do to see if I can find the problem with my actions is use the Home Assistant logs. So to get there, we're going to go to System and we're going to go to Logs. Now, you may have a, a lot of uh, other issues in here. Some of them are really no big deal, but go ahead and clear those out. Then what you want to do is you want to go try to trigger your automation. Okay, so now I've went and I've moved in front of those motion detectors. Again, the automation doesn't, didn't work, but now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to refresh my logs. Okay, now we see I have an error while executing my automation. And it says something here about RGBW color. And again, it comes in there twice. So that at least, at least gives me some idea of what I need to look for in the actions of my automation. So now I come over and I look at the action section of my automation. Now again, I'm looking at YAML, but you'll have the same thing if you're using the automation UI. And I come down and I find where this RGB color statement is that was throwing an error. Well, come to find out the LED strips that I'm using are WS2812B. They don't have a white channel. So what I should be having here instead of RGBW, I should just have RGB color. So after I save that change, I want to come back over here to my developer tools, YAML. I'm going to check my configuration and I'm going to reload my automations. Now that only takes a second. When that's done, I do like to go ahead and go back to my system, to my logs and go ahead and clear that out. Now I'm going to go back over to my automations, bring my automation back up again and I'm going to try to run the actions again. Hopefully that fixed the problem. We can always go back over to our logs one more time and see if anything else popped up in there by doing a refresh. And again, there are no issues. So now we've got the actions working, but what if the automation still isn't firing when we walk in front of the motion sensor? Well, that means we either have a problem with the trigger or the conditions, and we're going to look at those next. Triggers and conditions can be a little bit harder to troubleshoot. Fortunately, starting release 2021.4, so almost two years ago, the Home Assistant developers gave us one of the best tools for troubleshooting automations, and those are called traces. To get to traces, we're going to come down to our settings, go to our automations, and once again, we're going to find our automation, go to our three dots, and this time we're going to go to traces. What this is going to show is going to show the last five attempted executions of your automation. Now, if you don't have any traces showing at all, that means your trigger is not firing. So nothing is happening to even generate a trace. So you need to focus on your trigger. Also, again, if you're a YAML user for your automations, if you don't have a unique ID, you also won't have any traces. But let's take a look at this particular run of my bottom motion. The star is my trigger, and again, we can, it tells me down here exactly what the trigger is. So my binary sensor went on for 250 milliseconds. Next up is this AB. That is a condition. If we take a look at that, we can look at our trace and see that it failed this condition. Well, this condition is looking for an input Boolean of stair auto LEDs to be on. We can see the result here was false or off. It got a state of off, but it wanted a state of on. So therefore, our automation didn't continue. For me, I know exactly what that is. I've got an input Boolean over here. If I come over to my LED lighting, I have that turned off. So I'll simply turn that back on, and then I can go check my automation again. After I do that, once again, I will come back to my traces, and I will take a look at the next one. Okay, well, this time we can see I passed that or that boolean, input boolean. I wanted a state of on, I got a state of on. It went to the next condition, at which point it failed that condition. And that condition says that the lights have to be off. 
In other words, we're not going to try to turn the lights on if they're already on. In this particular case, the lights were already on, therefore the rest of the automation did not execute. And this is what a completely successful automation execution looks like. A trigger, it passed condition one, it passed condition two. I actually have a choose action in here, but you can ignore that. And these are the individual actions that actually ran in that automation. And we can see it ran all the way to completion. Automation traces is one of the best tools you've got for trying to troubleshoot your automation. Again, if you don't see any traces for your automation, that means the trigger is not firing and you can focus on that. If you do have traces, then you can step through here and see at what point the automation is either failing or not doing what you expected it to do and go fix your automation for that particular step. Now there is one other tool that I will sometimes use in troubleshooting, especially complex automations that have a lot of entities, and that is the history tool. On the history page, you can add as many entities, devices, or areas together and see how they were acting at the same time based on a timeline. So in this case, this happens to be a few of the devices involved in my garage lights. Again, I can combine the garage lights, the laundry room door, and the motion detector and see if they're all firing at the same time or if something else is going on. And again, I can continue to add additional entries in here. Let's say I've got a light level sensor, I believe. Yeah, analog light level, I can add that in there as well and see how that corresponds to the other entities involved in an automation. So it's just one additional tool that's really good if you have a lot of entities involved in a single automation. So those are a few of the tools and kind of the method that I use in troubleshooting automations. Now again, these help you find the problem. It doesn't necessarily tell you how to fix it. But there are a lot of us out there, myself included, that would be happy to try to help you fix some of your automations if you can't figure them out on your own. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you found anything in this video that you like, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. That lets me and YouTube know you want to see more videos like this. Click that subscribe button if you want to support me and help me out in making more videos. And ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new content. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.